Well, this conversation weekly is brought to you by our friends over at El Rio Grande Mexican Restaurant. Our friend Raul Erdialis. Shout out. Yes. Raul. Huge Roman Harper and Saints fan, so he's looking forward to having his name tied to this segment throughout the college football and NFL season here on Off the Bench. Ro, good morning, man. How are you? I'm doing good, man. How about you guys? I appreciate that uh, that welcoming right there. That was yeah, pretty good. Absolutely. Even giving Alabama a little love. Okay, okay. Right okay. now. Okay, chill out, chill out, chill out. It's all right, but chill you know, we're good. We're here to talk about the black and gold, Roman, okay? Chill out. <laughs> You're a star at Prattville, though. Yes, I was. I mean, that's when I really got my name out there. I mean, nobody knew it. Recruiting was so different back then, but it's all right. I made it out. That's all that matters. For sure. Yes, sir. Uh, how do you make it out of this fourth preseason game? Who is this important for tonight in the NFL? Uh, you know what? I, I think it's important for the guys that who are right on the bubble. Um, most people, always, you know, you hear about the 53-man roster and all the – the nuances that go into building the right team, the right city three. And it's really, it's only down to about 15 different guys that really are trying to buy a position right here. I think for a guy like Deontay Harris, that was huge. Him running back a kick. It really puts a guy like uh, Marcus Sherrill in a, a lot of, you know, a lot of trouble because you look at him, is he really a great cornerback? Not really, but he really made his way in the league through returning kicks, punts, and things like that. And now you got a guy like a Deontay Harris who's really stepped up, shown some, some wherewithal all preseason that he has the breakout ability, he has the real speed. And now you look up and he's just another guy coming from a small college that the Saints have brought in. We seem like we got a guy like this year in, year out. You know, we had Tommy Lee Lewis. We had, um, before that, we had uh, a, a running back, uh, golly, um, a cadet was another yep. guy. Um, you know, so every year we got, you know, we also had uh, uh, Chris Ivey from different college. So yep. every year the Saints are bringing in different guys from small colleges that are making their way in the preseason, putting their name out there, and really showing the league that, hey, you know, these small town guys can really make big plays. Roman Harper brought to you by El Rio Grande here on ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, and Alexandria. Last time we got a preview of the defensive backfield from you. Your former spot, the safety position, seems like it's one of the most heated competitions in preseason. Uh, now that you've had a chance to watch them play for a little bit, uh, what, what have you made of that spot? Uh, I, I don't see... I see the same starters starting. You know, at the end of the day, I, I, you know, you got uh, the, the Gardner Johnson kid who's making some plays. And, you know, they want to try and get him in the rotation. So anytime they have three three safety defenses, it allows you to match up with different personnel like two tight ends or teams that want to get bigger or even when they want to spread you out on first or second down, but they're really looking to run the ball or just kind of stay on pace. You can be able to use the safety as a nickel and allow him to be bigger in the run game, but also allow him to be, uh, you know, good in underneath zones. We're not really trying to match up man-to-man. You'll sneak in man-to-man coverages in these downs early. But overall, it allows you to be big, but still uh, flexibility to be able to run and be athletic enough to cover guys that want to throw it on uh, first and second down and not really attack you down the field, but in shorter area zones. So, Roman, as, as we get near to the end of camp here, you got this fourth preseason game. As you said, guys going to be fighting to state their case to uh, make the 53 if you're a bubble guy tonight. Uh, but, but we're kind of here at the end of this process, right? And you at least know what your frontline guys, who and what, they, what they're going to look like. How do you feel about this Saints team heading into the year? Like, has anything changed from how you felt going into camp? No, right. You know, you look at it. It's a veteran team with a whole bunch of young guys. That's a good thing that these guys that they've drafted the last two to three years, they've all played. So you, you're very, you're, uh, you love the veteranship, the veteran leadership that you have and that these guys have played a lot of downs together. So it's really all about just putting together that last little bit. Who's going to help us on special teams? Uh, you know, Taysom Hill has continued to grow as a quarterback this preseason. That's another thing that you really like in that, you know, he's starting to, starting to get it out not only that but him and Sean are on the same page Sean runs a completely different offense when Taysom Hill is in the game at quarterback and that allows them to kind of come together as well we understand what Teddy Bridgewater brings to this team as a, as a true backup quarterback but Taysom Hill gives you flexibility and we can continue to build on his packages and the things that he's doing up front defensively you got to see some other guys continue to step up and make plays against the quarterback especially interior uh Sheldon Rank is coming off uh, coming and starting to practice, if you listen to his words carefully, he said that he was shocked or that he was yeah. amazed or something that he was going to be out there to practice. You know, Sheldon is one of those interviews where he's going to put it out there and blatantly be honest with you. So that lets you know that he's not really ready to go right now. Yeah. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. We still have a process that needs to be out there. But 
we want to work through this. We want to see how he starts to feel putting on some pads. We want to see him run around practice a little bit, do some individual drills and see how he responds. We'll still give him a day off after working, things like that. It's just part of the process. But, you know, big O after being suspended game one, you're going to have to see with these guys interiorly how we're going to look. And is Davenport going to be the guy that we drafted uh, and we moved up to go get last year? We really need him to really step into and be that role player that uh, that they're looking for him to be. Well, okay. I had it right here in my notes where I'm going to ask you, um, where, where, where do you stand in the Hendrickson versus Davenport debate? Because obviously you have a lot more resources in Davenport right now. And if you take away game reps from him, like maybe you're kind of limiting his development. Uh, but then Hendrickson's had more success this preseason. So, so who do you think plays opposite of Cam Jordan? You know, right now, it doesn't really matter. I, I think Hendrickson okay. may start off. You know, you start him there just to kind of push Davenport to let him know that, hey, look, you still got to go out there and earn this. You haven't particularly earned it enough for Hendrickson's playing better. So you want to do those different things to really just try and play mind games. Sean is big into those mind game things where you, you're doing different things. You're pushing guys' buttons here to here. But it's mm. all to motivate. We all want the best team out there on Sunday. And you understand that. And when it comes down, then you also can do that to, to allow Davenport to kind of get confidence and have him be fresh on third downs and put him in. Because let's be honest, he's the better pass rusher. Mm. Henderson just plays hard. And he gives it to you every, mm. you know, whatever he can, every down, down in, down out. But you've also seen him get blown off the ball and run situations as well last year. Or he's getting caught out of a gap, so he gives up big plays. So you got to be smart about this. We understand Hendricks has been playing a little bit longer. He's only been in the the league one year more than Davenport. But in the grand scheme of things, we're trying to put the best out there. And we want competition. Competition breeds the best out of – it brings the best out of everybody. We're talking to Roman Harper, Saints legend, multi-time Pro Bowler, Super Bowl champion here on Off the Bench, 104.5-143-94.7 ESPN. And um, so, okay, so so, so help me out here. Uh, If The Saints we know or we believe to be among the best teams in the NFL. When you look around the league as a whole, who else do you put in like a true Super Bowl contender category? You know, I I hate to say this. All right, the Patriots are going to be one. Yeah, for sure. The, the Chiefs, I think, take a step back. Oh, you know, wow. I, 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 only because defensively, I I just not a believer. I, I'm I got to see it. All right, I know people are going to hate this. Atlanta could be another team mm. because of all the offensive weapons. I don't want to say it either, but I'm just you asked the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Rough. For sure. For I mean, sure. They, I mean, last year they were just beat up defensively, but offensively they're one of the scarier teams in the league. And this is the offensive league. So as long as you can score points, you can't put Kansas City in the conversation and not Atlanta. Let's be honest. Yeah. Um, and then Philadelphia Eagles. I like the Eagles and their roster. I don't love, you know, Wentz as the quarterback all the way because, you know, he's done great, but he's also been – hasn't been healthy. And they're bringing in Josh McCown off the street, who's living in the neighborhood right across from me here in Charlotte, <laughs> to come over here and be a backup quarterback. So that scares me a little bit. Didn't they, didn't, those are my teams. Didn't they work out a deal with McCown where he can fly back on Friday nights and coach the high school team? Wait, what? <laughs> He's coaching Myers Park High School. That is true statement. He was his best friend is uh, is uh, the head coach, and he was supposed to be the offensive coordinator, working with the quarterbacks and everybody. And then next, you know, he gets the job from Philly. I I did not know that, but I'm not shocked by it at all. <laughs> That's great. Uh, speaking of <laughs> offensive quarterbacks. Um, in breezes we trust. I mean, Roman, how good did they look on that opening drive last week, man? It's crazy because things just haven't changed in 13 years. They come out, they got the whole, you know, their first 15 marked down with Drew and Sean and those guys feel comfortable at offense, so they come right down, march it, march the ball right down the field, score seven points, Drew comes sit down. And it's like just every third preseason game I've ever been around them. Oakland, many years ago, we played them in a preseason game. And Sean was talking about how he wanted to see the offense come out at a halftime. He has all these other things that he wants to do out of the third preseason game. We have to show it to him. He gets up on his soapbox from time to time and just wants to go on these rants. So we let Sean talk. And then the game comes. Defensively, we come out on fire with our hair on fire. Get a three and out. Offense gets the ball. They come right down, score. We get another turnover on defense coming back. Offense comes right down. We're up 14 to nothing in the first quarter. Next, you know, Sean's like, okay, pull everybody out. We're good. Everybody's out. We're good. I just, 
And now he feels like he did good because he got everybody going mm-hmm. in his eyes. We're knowing and truthfully, we all know we need to go out here and handle. And we're trying to, we're not trying to play a whole much in this preseason either. So offensively, defensively, let's go out here and get the job done. Yeah. Let these young guys go out here and show what they can do. And let's not, let's not, you know, BS around. Let's get this thing done and let's move on. That connection between 9 and 13 looks like a fine wine. It's just so good, man, between Breeze and Thomas. Uh, Roman, this is going to be a great segment, man. Thank you for, uh, thank you for joining us this morning, and we're looking forward to Thursdays here on Off the